Hi guys, Chef Kevin Belton here. I hope you're having a great day. And something we're going to talk about today are steaks. I don't know if you're a meat lover, but I tell you what, I have a family that loves steaks. I'm not a big meat eater. I like a little bit every once in a while, but let me tell you about these guys. They love steaks. And I want to show you how I do my steaks at home. Now, let me get something out of the oven because you know I've got something started. I just want to, oh, look at that. Look at that. I'm going to tell you guys how we got to this point, but I just want to take this out and let it rest, okay? If you go into steakhouses, you always hear them talking about dry aged. Well, if you ever notice when you bring a steak home and it's in the packaging, how it looks a little wet, it looks very moist. Well, the way to combat that is I like to dry age myself at home. Now, in the steakhouses, you might see entire pieces of beef before they cut the steaks. They're in this room dry aging and basically just kind of cut off the ends when they need a new piece and slice that steak up. Here, this is how you could do it at home. Now, basically all you need are paper towels. Three sections of a paper towel. When you take your steak out of the package, lay out your towel and all I want you to do is wrap it. That's all I want you to do. Now, if you caught the earlier video, I did this, I started these on Monday. Monday, Tuesday night, I like to rewrap them because the first couple of days you're gonna get a lot of moisture out of them. But look at this. See, the paper stained, all right? And it's gonna be a lot wetter the first few days because all of that moisture is now out of there. And the whole point of doing this is so they have a concentration, concentrated flavor of meat. The meat is more concentrated flavor. That's why we're doing this, okay? Now, this little lip right here, okay? What I like to do with this, I like to cut this off. Now, a lot of times when folks cook steaks, they put, throw a little oil in the pan. I cut this off, and then I throw this in the pan to render that fat, because that way they're cooking in flavor. Now, here I had five steaks. You see, I still have three here. Now, if you're not going to cook them all, say you buy five steaks and you only need two. Once you dry age them, I can take this now, clear wrap it really good, put it in a freezer bag, and then put it in the freezer. And I can freeze them. Then take them out before you need them. Now, I like to have steaks sitting out before you cook them at least 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And what I've done with this one, you can see where I've trimmed the side, okay? And actually, I have that in the pan because I'm going to render that fat out of it. And all I've done, I've taken my Creole seasoning and a little garlic powder. That's all I've put on. And the reason it looks a little wet is I drizzled a little olive oil on it. The olive oil will keep it moist in the pan. Now, you may say, I'm not using the stove today. This is an induction burner. The way induction burners work, the pan gets hot but the surface doesn't get hot. So the reason I'm using the cast iron on here as opposed to our regular electric burner is that this will get the pan much, much hotter with the induction cooking. And you know, if you ever think about getting an induction burner, they're really nice because if you take the pan off, this will automatically cut off, okay? And what you're hearing, there's a fan underneath it just to keep it cool, but it causes the molecules in the pan, and I know this is getting to more than I, above my pay grade, but it creates a magnetism, which causes the molecules in the pan to move, which creates friction, and that's where the heat comes from. So actually the pan here is heating up, and you can see these little pieces I have in here, just rendering that fat off, all right? Now, if it doesn't give too much fat, that's okay. You can always squirt a little bit of oil, but what we want to do with this, we're going to put our steak down, but before getting our steak in, let me show you what I like to do. I like to hold it by the edge, lower it down to get that side cook. It's also important when you put a piece of meat or a chicken or whatever in the pan, when you first put it down, don't move it. Give it a chance to create a crust. Make sure, you know, we have a bad habit, we put things in the pan, then we move it around and we wonder why it's starting to stick in the pan. 
because it doesn't have time to create its own natural crust. So I'm just sealing off the sides. And you know, here, let's just lay this down. And you know, you can hear how hot this is, okay? This is really hot because we want to sear it. The whole reason to sear this is to lock those juices in, to lock those flavors in. Now, I'm going to do this on the first side for three minutes. Three minutes, we'll get it nice and sealed. And if you're doing this outside on the grill, same thing. I like to do three minutes on one side, two minutes on the other side. Now, you notice I just used a little bit of Creole seasoning and a little garlic pepper on here. But look, I have some rosemary here. If you like something like rosemary, you can lay the rosemary right in the pan or put it on the steak when you flip it over and have that rosemary underneath and it'll give off a nice flavor. All right, but you know, around here, everybody likes their steaks just with the seasoning and the garlic and that's it. But what we're doing right now, we're locking in that steak, we're sealing that juice inside of it. And that's why it's important to let a steak rest, okay? Now, these are ribeyes. That's what I'm doing this with. You could do this with a T-bone. You could do this with a little petit filet or a bigger filet. It doesn't matter what type steak. Go ahead and do that. And it's something that you may not pay attention to in the grocery store. But look at that steak in the pack. Notice how wet it looks. That's because of the moisture. That's, you know... As, as humans, we drink a lot of moisture. We got to keep our bodies hydrated. Well, the same thing with the cattle. They drink a lot of water. That moisture in there is to hydrate them, but we don't want that when it's cooking. We want to seal that off. And I tell you what, if you go ahead and dry age your steaks, then put them in the freezer. I've kept them in the freezer for like three or four months. Take them out a few days ahead. I put them in the refrigerator. And then I also take them out, remember, that 30 to 45 minutes beforehand because we want that center to be toward room temperature. Not totally room temperature, but we want it to be a little cooler. Now, let's go ahead and turn our steak. <coughs> Excuse me. As you see, it has that nice char on the outside. Now, there are different temperatures people like their steaks cooked. If you char the outside, and the inside is super, super rare, that's what you hear, what you may hear the term either Pittsburgh or black and blue. That's with the outside crisp and it's really rare on the inside. A rare steak has an internal temperature of about 120 degrees. Medium rare to medium, medium is about 130 degrees, 140 degrees. Medium rare would be about 130. Medium would be about 140, and then there are six that are well done. Now, when they're well done, it's internal temperature of 160 degrees. If you don't have a thermometer, and I'll show you this with the one that we took out of the oven in just a bit, you can press on your steak. When you press on it, see how spongy that is? See how it's spongy? If you ever watch a chef in open kitchen, and you see somebody cooking steaks and they start to do this, they're feeling how done it is. It's very spongy because of the fact that this is still rare. It's still uncooked on the inside. Now, the longer it cooks, the more done it gets, the firmer that stick is going to be in the middle. All right? So now that we've got this done on the first side, we've got on the second side, we can turn our burner off. I had the oven preheating at 425 degrees. Now, we're gonna stick this in the oven. What's gonna happen in the oven, as that steak's cooks, it's also gonna give off a nice little juice. It'll kinda almost create its own gravy. Look, at this is the one we took out. See, that's why we want steaks to rest. See that moisture there? Now let's get a knife so I can cut this open and show you. Now, if we press on this one, this is probably uh, probably a medium, medium rare. You know, the smaller sides will be cooked well, where the center will be not cooked as much. So keep that in mind. And don't be afraid. If you think the end is going to get overcooked, hey, 
go ahead, cut that steak off or cut the ends off. So you might cut this off and this piece off and cook them in three sections. That way it's not overcooked. But let's take our steak and just move it here to the cutting board. Now I'm just gonna cut this open and let you look at that inside there. Can you see that inside? That's a medium, that's a, that's a medium steak where it's still a little rosy, you still have a little bit of rosiness in there, but you can see coming from the outside into where we seared it, this is well cooked, this is still a little rosy, and you see the second side is not cooked as much as the first side because we left it longer that first time. So remember, if we want it rare in the oven, roughly 10 minutes. If we want it more medium, in the oven 15 to 20 minutes, and if you want it well, I would leave it in that 425 degree oven for at least 30 minutes. Now, of course, when you get ready to serve this, if you wanna make yourself a little herbed butter, or if you wanna put some rosemary on the top of this, some in restaurants, some restaurants you go to, they stick a little bit of rosemary in and then they light it just to get that flavor. But here we have our steaks. Don't be afraid, tell you what gang, Get yourself some paper towels. Go ahead, dry age your steaks. They'll have so much flavor. Just simple seasoning on a good piece of meat. Sear it off both sides in the oven. Let that baby cook to your temperature. And remember, it's better to undercook it because you can always cut it and check it and cook a little more if you need it, okay? So I hope this helps. I hope you all have a great day. We love you out there. For WWL, I'm Chef Kevin Belton, and I wish I could see, you could see these faces. Cookie, Noah, and Monica are like, well, man, will you hurry up and finish? We want some steak. So for WWL TV, I'm Chef Kevin Belton. Have yourself a fantastic day, and have yourself a good steak night.